Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you're watching Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Joining me as always are my co-hosts from the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks podcast, Rebellious D and Trav. Guys, I'm really excited about this because this is our three-year anniversary episode, man. Can you mm-hmm. imagine? It's like we've been here for three years now. What you get me? Uh, what you get me? It's the I, big I, three. I, I give you a pinky, bro. That's all a I pinky. Give you. Yeah. You're gonna give me a real pinky. That yeah, pinky. I, I'll give you a pinky. You know, as, okay. as long as we don't talk about Bruno. That's all right. Oh, here we I'll go. talk about Bruno. Bruno. Hey, yeah, we're not supposed to talk about Bruno, but D, man, what's good, bro? You've been here now for what? A year? Two Too long. Now? Too a year long. And a half. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. Hey, joining us on our three-year anniversary episode is professional voice actress Brittany Cox. Brittany, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm so good. I'm excited to be hanging with you guys tonight. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> thank, mutual. thank you so much oh, for yeah. joining us, and you know, especially because this is our three-year anniversary episode. We we really appreciate having you here. So. Uh, before we get into today's interview, everybody that's watching, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit that bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And D, take it away. Podcast in the description, like, follow, subscribe to the channel, and thank you for watching. Nice. That's it. That's it. That's it. So yeah, let's go so ahead and pro. get into it. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Nice and simple. So yeah. Brittany, something that we do up here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks for all of our guests is we ask, what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has one. So tell everybody who Brittany Cox is. Oh my gosh, I don't know if mine is that exciting. Um, I'm uh, originally from North Carolina, so hey. uh, oh, East wow. Coaster. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I lived up in Seattle for seven years um, where I went um, after I graduated from college. I moved to Seattle and I was doing theater and on camera work. Uh, I was in a couple of weird Microsoft commercials that no one should ever <laughs> find. Um, <laughs> I'm digging then, now. Right? Yeah, I know. I want to watch them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, they'll show up somewhere, I'm sure. The, the internet is infinite, right? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, and I just kind of, uh, living up there, I kind of fell into voiceover, which was pretty cool. Um, I did my first video game that not a lot of people know about. Um, the, do you guys remember the one two Switch when the Switch came out? It's the thing that taught you how to use all the controllers and stuff. You know, unfortunately, no. I did, that's- everybody that's here, I don't have a switch, so I wouldn't know. But Trav and D- it was like yeah. a tutorial. It was, it, you know, it kind of. It was. It wasn't a great. It was. It was an okay game. It was fine. <laughs> okay. um, and so I was the voice of a bunch of different of the games on there, teaching you how to use the controllers and stuff. And um, yeah, that got me kind of hooked into video games like I didn't know it was a real job that people had right <laughs> I, like it, obviously it's a job and so I fell in love and moved to LA and now it's all I do which is kind of cool that is cool <laughs> and I think it's awesome because I was just uh, talking about this with a guest on who's that cosplayer where I interview cosplayers and you can check out those videos on our YouTube channel but um the guests that I was interviewing they're from LA and I was saying that, you know, a lot of voice actors that we interview, they're either from L.A. or from Texas. And, you know, they were like, well, you know, Texas is the big spot for voiceover work. And I was just like, I don't know, because a lot of our guests, they live in L.A. Yeah, I mean, I like moving to L.A. I actually came here to do to pursue on camera work. Oh, nice. um, I, I didn't even know it was like a voiceover hub down here. Mm. Um, and then when I got here, I just kind of fell into the community and meeting all the people. And it's huge. Like there's so much voiceover work in L.A. and more all the time. And I have a lot of friends in Texas who do it as well. And it's just crazy. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 oh, go ahead, Trav. No, I was going to say, I think that misconception just comes from Funimation being in Texas, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. But when you think of like big picture voiceover stuff, it's typically L.A. where all those studios are kind of based out of. Yeah, it's because we got Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network and Disney. I feel mm-hmm. like that's and they're all in my neighborhood. So like they're all in like a six block radius. So they're really wow. close together. Wow. Uh, have like have you ever been to any of those places? Yeah, I've been, um, I drive by the Cartoon Network building all the time, Um, but uh, I went to a panel at Nickelodeon that they were having at Nick Studios. I don't know how I got invited. I just kind of, I didn't know anybody there. I just kind of showed up and I was like, oh, free food. Okay. Uh, 
I'll hear somebody talk about something I have no idea what they're talking about. Um, but they let us wander around the studios and stuff. And so their courtyard has like all these cool um, statues of, you know, the Rugrats and, um, you know, all, all these different uh, fairly, uh, fairly odd parents and stuff like that. It's just so cool. It's, it feels like you're a kid in a candy store. I'm like, this is a real place. Oh my gosh. That is odd. Did you get slimed? No, oh my! I, that would have that would have completed my journey. I'm so I just always avoided. wanted to get slimed as a kid. That's what I was about to say. List. Like as soon as you leave Nickelodeon Studios and you say bye, like slime just, just comes and. <laughs> and that, I mean, I always thought as a kid, like that was one of the coolest things. It's like when you be watching the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards, and like, oh, yeah. people would be up on stage, and then that slime would come down, and you know, it's I just dream. always wanted to be slime. You know, mm -hmm. I've always like. I usually, you know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to meet Slimer and I wanted to get slime. You know, it's like because Ghostbusters was one of my favorite movies coming up. So, I mean, yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I love Ghostbusters. Did you watch the new one? No, I haven't seen it yet. I'm so behind. I can't wait to watch it. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, same here. Like, I just caught up on uh, a bunch of movies like Encant Encanto. Uh, mm. What's the other one, Trav, that I just watched? Uh, Resident Evil. Oh, Resident Evil. I Resident thought you were going to say The Color Purple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he finally Take seen that, too. <laughs> what? Brit, Brit, have what you seen The Color purple. purple? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> this, Brittany Tate is with you on your way out. <laughs> Only use it when you need to. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, and it's, the sad thing is, it's my mom's favorite movie. And, uh, oh. yeah, and I, I just watched it uh, last She's year. Like, yeah, 50 exactly. years late. Better yeah. late than never. Yeah. Exactly. Good know, that's his motto. How'd you know that? <laughs> that's his <Second>. mantra. <laughs> now, Brittany, that's why he ain't been slimed. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> now, Brittany, I want to kind of take it back because you said that when you originally went to LA, you wanted to go there for on camera work. Now, did yeah. you do any on camera work before you got into voice acting? Yeah, I mean, the, it was, I did a bunch of like indie films that like no one got paid. We just showed up and they maybe had sandwiches. Um, some of them got completed, some of them didn't. Uh, so I did, I did kind of those things and um, I was in a, like, I was in like a couple of Microsoft commercials and things like that. Um, but I, I didn't really book anything exciting or anything big. It mm -hmm. just, I don't know. I, th I feel like with stuff like that, you either kind of find where you fit. And I just don't think I fit into the on camera world. Like, I don't know. It just didn't uh, feel like home to me. Yeah, interesting. Right. Now, I wanted to say, I know you that's your answer as for past projects or anything, but is that something you still want to pursue in, at any at any level or? Yeah, I mean, I'm still totally open to um, doing on camera stuff. I have a lot of friends that are directors and still do oh. on a lot of on camera work. Mm -hmm. um, I have been so lucky, especially, you know, in these past three years that I've been so busy with voiceover. I just haven't had time to audition or yeah. do anything like that, which has been oh, yeah. like so unreal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still totally into it. And I, I think it's so fun and it's cool to be like, not in a booth by yourself, but like be with other people. Oh I yeah, but we get that a lot actually uh -huh. dealing with the pandemic stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, cause uh, I wanted to kind of save the Fena stuff towards the end of the episode, but I know like after the series had wrapped up, like that was one of the things that you said was that, you know, you hope to meet the rest of the cast and crew that you worked with on the show. Now I know that this was back in October when it ended, have yeah. you had the opportunity to meet them yet or is it still on hold? So I've met a couple of the cast members who are in LA. Um, I met uh, the guy who voices, I, it's one of the twins. I always get them confused. <laughs> um, but uh, Daryl Delphin, I, we met up for coffee and so I got to meet him in real life. And then nice. um, a lot of the other voice actors um, like Nick and Rob who voice the two uh, male leads um they're in new york so i haven't been able to meet them yet but i'm hoping this year this next year we all get to meet up somewhere <laughs> either on their coast or mine <laughs> hey well you know we have connections trav he knows dwayne johnson 
D, he knows Michael. So, uh, you know, yeah. maybe, Michael. maybe we can make it work. But no, but Nick is awesome. What? And, you know, we interviewed Nick and uh, yes. make sure that you check out his episode either on the podcast or on YouTube. Uh, it's a good one. It mm-hmm. was a good one. And, uh, you know, Nick, we asked him a question about like if he was in the world of My Hero Academia, what would his quirk be? And <laughs> Trav, what did he say his quirk would be? To control people or something but like not, that? Pod he, Piper? That won't be exact words. He, he did say that. Uh, it was pretty close because I called him whatever he said. People would yes. do whatever he said. So yeah. That sounds <laughs> worse, <there>. Trav. <laughs> that was worse. But, um, but Brittany, to piggyback off of something that you were saying about, like, you know, being so busy with voice acting work, like, how was it after the Nintendo gig and, you know, actually you know, doing some voice acting work for something that you actually enjoyed? Or should I say actually enjoy? Because I don't want you to get in trouble, but I mean... No, um, no, it's, it's, it's different. Like, you know, when it's like when you do an indie film and you show up and you're like, it's okay. Hopefully it works out. We don't know. (laughs) It might not. We'll (laughs) see. Uh, And so that was definitely one of those games that was like, it's fun. We'll see what happens. Um, but I do really uh, love a lot of the games that I've been in where like there's an actual story and you know mm-hmm. you're you're living in a whole world and it's you can have more fun, I feel like instead of just being an announcer voice. Um, but yeah, when I when I got to LA, um, I was in, taking a bunch of classes. Um, I was in a bunch of on camera classes, a bunch of voiceover classes. and in one of my uh, on-camera classes, I met a girl from Texas, actually, um, who does a lot of voiceover, and she was like, oh, you should meet my friend Patrick. You do voiceover, cool, send me your reel, you should meet my friend Patrick. And I said, okay, I don't know who Patrick is, but sure. So she sends my stuff to him, and we email back and forth a couple of times, and we, we keep trying to meet up for coffee, but he's really busy, which totally understandable. And then out of the blue, he emails me, and he's like, hey, I have an audition for a video game I think you'd be good at. And I was like, okay, tell me where to show up. I'll be there. Um, so I end up going to Cup of Tea, and they're a studio that does, that uh, produced the Fire Emblem Three Houses game, mm-hmm. and my audition for Ingrid, and got it. Oh, nice. I had no idea what I was auditioning for, like, because they can't tell us anything. You just show right. up and you read and, you know, see what happens. Sick. One and of my then, favorite franchises. Keep going. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have oh, a limited so cool. edition 3DS for the three houses on my show. Oh my somewhere. gosh, that's so cool. Well, yeah, I like, and Patrick voice directed, and I had no idea. Oh, and, look at that. Like, I met all these, when I showed up for the audition, I met all these voice actors. I had no idea who they were. I The first person I met was um, Greg Chun, who I don't know if you guys know. Um, but he voiced, just voiced the lead in uh, Squid Game. He He's the English voice of the guy oh, in Squid okay. Game. And he's also in uh, Judgment. Have you guys, uh, the video game Judgment? I've not played that yet, no. That's mm. totally, there's so many. There's so many good games. Yeah. Anyway, he's sure. he's one of the like rock stars in the uh, VA world. And mm-hmm. um, I met him and I had no idea. And then I found out later i was like oh, what oh my gosh so anyway <laughs> that was my introduction into the uh los angeles video game scene and to book a game that big when i first moved mm-hmm. here is just crazy crazy yeah, yeah that's a heck of an introduction yeah, yeah i'm I mean, looking fire him down and looking at his uh catalog and he was on the great pretender guys and you know we had our great pretender month and uh you can look at we those did have videos great pretender month. Yeah, yes, we did. Mm-hmm. But no, but uh, but yeah, continue, Brittany. I'm sorry. I I just like to look yeah, people just... up whenever you, you say names and stuff. No, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I do the same thing. <laughs> I have IMDb on my phone with me at all times. So if someone says something, I'm like, who is mm-hmm. this? Oh yeah, yeah that, that's, <laughs> that's the way to do it. Mm-hmm. Never know. Mm-hmm. I just want to say that Fire Emblem. What an amazing way to uh, introduce yourself to video game voice acting. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's such a, um, it's a storied franchise, you know, just like a lot of others. But that one is actually one that has so many characters. And like you said, it's more than just being an announcer. 
it's like you know three houses is amazing so oh. i mean as are a lot of their games so mm -hmm. i love I, that's always so nice to hear because like it's yeah. such a it, it was such a exactly like you said it's such a world and there's yeah, so you know, many characters so many characters yep. and so many storylines yep. yeah yep. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nuts i don't know how they keep everything like together yeah. I'd get especially so with yours it was like you had the uh the true ending then you had the two sides where they had their endings mm -hmm. right and you know eat every twist and turn like doing something with this character could mean this character you know mm -hmm. dies or whatnot it's just it's very fun you know well, what's uh, your favorite house oh, it's been a while uh, the uh red and white house i can't even remember oh the um the eagles what was it yes Eagles. Yes. Yeah, it's like the blue lions, the golden deer, and the eagles. Nice. Yeah. I, no. I thought you was a 49ers fan, bro. You well, can't take any roll for the easy, easy. Eagles. We ain't <laughs> up here for that track. <laughs> easy. Now, you know, something yeah. that I wanted to say is that I think it's cool because you did the Switch stuff at first and then you leveled mm -hmm. up. And because it's still with Nintendo, and then to mm -hmm. be a part of the Fire Emblem franchise and Hopefully, if they come out with another Super Smash Brothers, we don't know right now because they said that it's over, your character will be in it. Because I think that that would be awesome because Smash Brothers mm -hmm. is one of Nintendo's like stored franchise games. Flagship you know? oh, yeah. franchise. Mm -hmm. Damn, right, you know for saying? sure. It's now, so cool. Um, it was something that I wanted to um, bring up, but I had a brain fart because I started talking about the Nintendo stuff. <laughs> I, hey. I think, I think Trav, take it away. It'll come back well, to me. As you know, man, I'm like, you know, the recording tech nerd. And I seen that, you know, you have a company called Next Level Voice Demos. Oh, yeah. And you know, I got to ask about, hey, we're, we're leveling up and you're the next level. So, I mean, hey, we need to I hear like about it. it. Oh, my God. That's amazing. You were so sweet. Right. <laughs> it was meant to be. It was. It was. I knew I liked you guys. Hey, thank, um, hey, thank you. I love that. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, um, so my husband and I, we run, um, we produce voiceover demos for voice actors. Um, he's a composer and audio engineer, uh, oh, wow. which is pretty cool. And so we, we make a good team. So he handles all the like technical stuff and the, you know, putting in all the music and the sound effects for all of, all of our demos. And I handle all the, you know, writing the scripts and all the directing and getting in from the acting side of stuff. And so, um, yeah, we've been producing demos for about 10 years and uh, nice. we actually wow. started doing it when we were in Seattle because I was looking to get a voiceover demo done and I couldn't find a place that I liked like all the people who were doing it um, and I, I didn't know very much about right. you know all like I didn't know you could go to LA and work with a demo producer yeah. I wasn't that smart um, so I was like they have to be here um, and so I couldn't find anybody that I liked that was still currently working. And so we were like, well, my, my husband at the time was working at a studio called Bad Animals um, up in Seattle. And so we were like, we'll just do it and see what happens. And people really liked it and asked us if they would, if we would produce theirs. And then cut to now, we still do it for a bunch of different people, which is pretty cool. So we love it. I like that. Congratulations. That is pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. You know, Thank and you. to piggyback off of what you were saying about how, you know, when you were doing it and you couldn't figure out like, well, you know, where do I need to go? When we had interviewed uh, voice actor Cedric L. Williams, like that was I one of the things. I love Cedric. Uh, hey, he's a, he's a part of the family because up here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, oh, it's sorry. like Olive Garden and when you're here, <laughs> your family. <laughs> And uh, you, one does it things, come with breadsticks? I need hey, to know. Hey, we tell everybody we're going to mail on breadsticks. Everybody oh, asks. Hey, hey, unfortunately, Trav, he going to have to start hey, putting out the breadsticks soon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, everybody's going to be like, where are my breadsticks at? But, uh -huh. you know, one of the things that he was telling us was when he first got into voice acting, it was the same thing where it's just like he didn't know where to go. And he actually did his own demo. And he said, you know, he was able to catapult off of that. And I mean, you see where he is now. And also check out his episode too. It's uh, here on YouTube and whatnot. You know, I always got to plug the stuff, but yeah. As I just, you should. I just think it's cool <laughs> that, you know, that you and your husband, it's just like y'all became a tag team and formed mm -hmm. your own business. I really think that that's cool. Um, I'm actually supposed to be doing a voice over class soon with uh, Matthew David Rudd, who is somebody else that we interviewed. Oh. And That's so, uh, so great. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I really appreciate, you know, interviewing you guys because I feel like every time we interview somebody, 
it's like we learn something new you know what i'm saying it's just like everybody is on the same path but they're going down different roads you know what i'm saying so totally well and it's cool because like everybody comes to it from a different way like mm -hmm. there's no one way to do it there's no right. one path you don't have to be in a specific place or take the one class or whatever no one piece to it yeah exactly. yeah so. yeah you can come at it from a total of a bunch of different ways and i i think that's what's kind of so fun about it because we all have our different things that right. we do and that we like and that we fall into so it's so kind sometimes of that's what makes it, it yep sometimes it can that, be a bizarre adventure I, dude you took hey, the words right was, out of my hey, mouth she was bro. on jojo's bizarre adventure hey, you know <laughs> i'm gonna get to that you yeah. know i'm gonna get to that mm -hmm. but um <laughs> My brain started working again, and I remember what I wanted to ask you. Oh. Um, you were in the Violet Evergarden movie, and that's something that, you know, D, he put me on because he was a fan of it. And we still haven't watched the movie yet, but we did watch the series. Yep. And I just wanted to ask you, like, how was it being a part of that movie? Like, were you a fan of the series before you got casted into the movie? You know, I had actually never heard about it until I got mm. cast, which is crazy. And I was like, wow, this animation is beautiful. Yeah, I yeah, need to look is. this up. And so um, I started watching the show. It's so good. I yeah, haven't yeah. finished it, but it is so good. And I mean, I feel like talking to the, um, the team that was putting the dub together for the film, it's such a nice, uh, from my understanding, and you guys will have to tell me once you see it, it they were saying it was such a good um, kind of bringing everything together. Yep. I actually really watched the movies. Oh, yeah? Because oh, yeah, it's on the Netflix. movie and the special. You remember, yeah. we just didn't, we haven't done anything officially with a review or anything, but I, I watched it, and it does tie up, you know, basically all the loose ends. It looked like D had tears yeah. in his eyes. He was just, just like, relax. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's like you started rubbing your eyes and uh, you, you just worry. Eyes look, you just worry. Look, I worry about my tears. You worry about the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No like, shame. Yeah. No shame. Hey, no, man. but um, I just want to slide off of Violet, and you are also a part of something that I'm currently playing. One of my favorite video games, Genshin Impact. Yeah. You do the voice official. I do. And, uh, she's actually one of the characters I main in my party. So, uh, I mean, what is it like being a part of that? Or oh you know, my gosh, y'all, y'all just got the vibes tonight, uh, y'all. <laughs> Oh, I'm yeah. so glad. It's so cool. I it, no, I love I love talking to people about things that they're really excited about. Yeah, he's the number me one really fan over here. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been playing that game for a long time. It's uh, so just, uh, fun. Yeah. So well, I mean, I with official it was crazy because like when mm -hmm. they sent out the auditions, they did not say she would have to speak words in German. That was oh, not yeah. advertised oh, at all. Oh wow, really? <laughs> and so um, when, I, when I got her, I show up to the <clears> first <throat> session and they're like, okay, so here, uh, here's her name. Princess uh, for Ertelung, good luck. <laughs> yep. I was like, what? <laughs> what? So that first session was rough trying to figure out how to say all, because of course the first time I record, I have to say all the German words. Um, so that was interesting. Um, but yeah, it was so much fun. It's so fun being a part of Genshin. It's, I mean, it's a great team. Yeah, she's a and very interesting character. Yeah. She's very weird. Very for, strange lines sometimes. Yeah, for if for those who haven't played, um, Fischl lives in her own little world. And she, I don't understand what she's saying half the time. We have a translator mm -hmm. <laughs> in our mm -hmm. sessions who's like, okay, here are these crazy long words. Here's kind of what they mean and kind of what we think she's saying. We'll go with that yep. and then um she has uh her raven companion yep. oz her who kind of tells yep. everybody what she's saying sort of mm. he's like her <laughs> translator in a way yeah exactly like, yeah, don't mind her yeah exactly yeah, and so. it was i mean being a part of the game um because a lot of my friends um are also in the game um so uh stephanie awesome. sutherland who is the voice mm. of jean um oh nice mm -hmm. helly baskin who's amber okay um, we uh when we got it we were like is i mean it's a new game i don't know maybe it'll be mm -hmm. big i don't it's really pretty i hope it's something yeah, the, and i and i was like nobody's right. gonna like fischl i i was like <laughs> everyone's Fischl's gonna hate her she's gonna be annoying and i'm so happy Strong. that people like her <laughs> yeah. yep i mean all of that stuff 
Oh, okay. <laughs> the well, and I mean, community it's it's pretty big, like you said. Yes. And oh, yeah. It's like when you go to these cons, it's like you see people who are cosplaying as the characters, yeah, and they're swapping like ID tags and whatnot. It's like I started playing the game, but yeah. I'm still at the beginning of it, and I uh, I know that once I start playing it, because D he's always talking about it. He's always talking yeah. about like the um like sending me videos of new characters that get added and yep. whatnot. And oh, yeah. like how you said, Brittany, it's like, there's so many voice actors in this game. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's awesome sweet. too, that, you know, you have work for everybody. Cause you know, a lot of games, yep. it's just like, sometimes it's like the voice over stuff. It's just a few lines and whatnot. Whereas in this game, like, it's kind of like you're watching an anime. Yep. Yeah, yes. it's nuts. Yeah, it's just like, um. It's a, again, like kind of like Fire Emblem. It's like your character isn't like really a one shot. You'll mm -hmm. see right, yeah. recurring, everybody's like a recurring character. And then, you know, the, the special thing with the project is they do like special events. And in the special events, it'll just feature three or four of their characters. And the next one will be different ones, kind of like episodic in a way. And it's very, I think it's it's great. And there's characters for everybody, Banks. So keep keep playing, man. Yeah, I, I totally, uh, I mean, that's the, I think that's why it's so popular is because yeah. there's so many different characters and there's something uh, for everybody, like, that right. you can relate to and, like, ha really enjoy being around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, I I'm still shocked how many new characters they keep bringing in. Yeah, it just is forever <laughs> growing. Mm -hmm. None yeah. of us thought it was going to be that big. Mm -hmm. Would never yeah. have guessed. Something that I want to ask you now because I had brought it up earlier was yeah. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah, I actually already knew I was going to get there. <laughs> well, well, hey, if, if we're going to talk about JoJo, let's talk about the best JoJo. And what's that? The JoJo we about to talk about, bro. Now, I'm, now I'm just going to say because Trav and D are not really in the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and nice. we we did a review for Thus Spoke Rohan. And oh yeah. They they enjoyed that. Loved you know what it. I'm saying? And I tried to tell them. I was yeah, just like, well, y'all like care. Rohan, y'all need to watch part four. Even though I don't like people that skip parts, it's like, if y'all like the character, y'all should check it out. So oh. I wanted to ask you, were you a fan of the series before you did work on it? Or was this your first time getting into the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Yeah, I had actually seen a couple of episodes um, before because, you know, I have friends in it and I was like, you know, I need to, I hear about this show all the time. I should watch it. I should at least know what people are talking about. And it's so weird. <laughs> it's it such is. a weird show. <laughs> well, it's not a weird show. It's a it's bizarre show. It's a bizarre it's show. show. I told you in the title. You are correct. They, they did great advertising. It is a bizarre world. Um, but my husband's a huge fan. He loves the show. And so when I got the spoke uh, Rohan, we were like, <laughs> what? Oh my oh, gosh. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was cool. And it was weird that it, it was cool that it was like an offshoot, like yeah, totally like different worlds. Yeah. 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 So it was super neat. Yeah. And um, the episode that you were in, you were in the millionaire village. Guys, yeah. I don't know if you remember that, but that was the one where, oh, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the houses and Excuse stuff. Me. Yeah, with yeah. the houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was crazy. You know, I mean, I just think that it was cool that they actually animated that. And I heard that there's a live action uh, version of that as well. So because and this is a question that I've always had, uh, and I don't think I've asked it yet. But when you have characters that you voice on an anime, do they usually contact you when uh, they say, hey, we want to do a dub for the live action? Because I think that the live action mm -hmm. is only subbed right now. Like, would they do they still contact you to reprise the role or would you have to audition for that again? You know, I honestly don't know. That's such an interesting question. I've never come up against that. So I honestly don't know. But that would be I mean, that'd be really cool. Um, I think if if people are, especially if fans are really into a franchise, like, um, uh, what is it? The, the Nathan Drake, um, Oh, Uncharted. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the guy who voices Nate, uh, Nathan, you know, the fans love him so much and they now have a live action movie and he's yeah. not playing the live action character, but they're bringing him into the franchise in some way oh, to wow. be like, Hey, he makes a cameo. Yeah, exactly. And so, I, I mean, I think that's pretty cool, but I, yeah, I honestly don't know if they would do that for a uh, live action and have the original English voice 
voice the the dub of the live action. That'd be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll make some phone calls. We'll get to the bottom. Yeah, Thank you, Trav. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He knows a lot of people out there that he can contact <laughs> oh, somebody. <gosh. laughs> but no, I mean, I just think that it, it's cool because I know um, I'm not sure if they did it with the Bleach live action, but I think with mm. the Full Metal Alchemist, Trav, didn't they get the original cast Bro. for... Or did you not watch it? I know we watched it. Oh, sub. I watched it. We watched it sub, but we didn't watch, I watched it sub. It sub so I don't, yeah, I don't even know if, if they did that. We but, don't you know, did that one, conversation right here, though. That's okay. You know, they're subs or dubs. It's either exactly. way. That's right. I do, I do both. I do so. both, too. Yeah, exactly. You should do both. And, mm -hmm. you know, since we're here on this topic and, you know, we're talking about anime and whatnot, what are some of your favorite animes that you grew up watching? And what are some, and after you oh. answer that, what are some of your current favorites? Yeah, so I, I mean, I grew up watching, um, you know, uh, oh my gosh, my mind went blank. Sorry. Isn't that funny how that happens? It. Um, yeah, so I grew up watching, um, uh, Gundam. I watched Gundam. Classic. Yeah, right? And Classic. then, um, you know, Pokemon, of course. Of course. I didn't even know that that was an anime. Had no idea. I was yeah, like, I mean, oh, yeah, it's whatever. It was like, same thing with I think as a kid, us. none of us did. Nah, yeah. You know? We were just like, oh, it's it's a cartoon. Why mm -hmm. not? This is fun. Yeah, we don't know. They have, <laughs> Pokemon have weird names. Cool. <laughs> um, oh, and uh, uh, Cowboy Bebop, of course. Ooh, right. Ooh, of course. Go, hey, go D, pick. Hey, top 10, top 10. D, I've been plugging all episodes. You can take this one away. What, what do you want me to talk about? Uh, Cowboy hey, Bebop? Hey, if... It's I the mean, one year you, anniversary of yeah. having Jet Black on the pod. Is what he wants I mean, you to Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, we had the Bo Billingsley on the pod. Oh, it man. was absolute honor, the voice of Jet Black himself. And uh, I don't know. What 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 else can we say about Cowboy Bebop, guys? It's it's a phenomenal franchise. That's great. Hey, you know we got to mention when we had Mason Alexander Park, and they were yep, on the live go. action version of uh, Cowboy mm -mm. Bebop. So, mm. yeah, yep. yeah, we love Cowboy Bebop here, so. Yeah. Did you guys watch the fans. live action? Yeah, yeah. Course, I, I enjoyed yeah. it. We did a review for it as yeah. well. So yeah, I, I mean, uh, it's very good visually. Uh, the voice, like the guy who replaced Jet, mm -hmm. what's his name? Banks, the uh, actor. It's Mustafa. I call him Bushmaster. Yeah, Bush. Yeah, like it he is was Bushmaster Mustafa, on Luke yeah. Cage, but it's Mustafa. He is amazing, and Mustafa he sounds just like Jet. I mean, yeah. how clo how much closer could you have gotten to that voice? It's just without getting just, bow. Yeah, like it's amazing how how he sounds, but it's um, it's a good watch. I rem I recommend it to you and your husband. Check it out. Okay, well, well it's on our list. It's just Denmark. like you know, it should be. Time. Hey, Banks but got yeah, a list. Oh, yeah. I got a long. So, yeah, Banks list. got a list. It's like it's longer <laughs> than Santa's list. Hey, I mean, he's oh, yeah. I just watched the color purple, mm. so I'm I'm pretty sure that your list is Trav. shorter than mine. <laughs> I, <laughs> Trav, he's yeah. checking it three times. He ain't checking hey, that it, twice. It, the the color purple musical the hollywood musical is coming out next year so maybe in hey. the year 2040 he'll actually get get around to watching that one too i, I we'll was joking out. i was joking with one of my friends <laughs> and i had told her that uh i want to watch the color purple too now and she was like the color purple too and then i sent her a picture of uh silly and Medea, <laughs> and she was like come on like, this, this <laughs> oh <real."> god <laughs> but uh Back to um, Kawa Bebop, another thing, another reason that franchise is so good is because it's so short and it was so mm -hmm. impactful. Yeah. You know, so many people watched it. You got to watch the live action. You got to. Okay. Yeah. Done. Done. So, Brittany, um, so what are some of your uh, current favorite animes that you enjoy watching? Oh, gosh. Uh, currently, I'm catching up. I'm so behind, but I'm catching up on Demon Slayer. Hey. Mm. Nice. Yeah. It's so good. It's good. So damn good. good. <laughs> hey, your boy, your boy that you were talking about earlier plays Patrick, uh Patrick L. Williams. You got to say that. Well, no, I was talking about oh. um Greg. Yes, yes, he voices Michael Jackson in it. Mm, you mean that guy? Boo. Yeah. Boo. Oh, you can't see him. Boo. Oh Boo. yeah, it's like Boo. Boo. Oh, I Michael it. MJ. MJ. Oh, um, I actually, my wife actually got me Zenetsu's sword for Christmas. Oh, that's fire. Um, cool. Yeah, I pull it out every I got to play with it. Yeah they, I mean, yeah, they tried to take me out <laughs> when I went over there. Uh, so, of course. Uh, yeah. 
So it's just like you know, but, uh, so, so, when mm-hmm. I come to Travis' yeah. house, his daughters, it's like they attack me, and mm-hmm. when I come yeah, to D, probably they, they got so This dude always playing victim, D. You said yeah, uh, they attack he, he me. Come in, he <laughs> come in, <laughs> I mean, pick like, with the kids, and when they get them. Well, Brittany, he don't you, mention how Brittany, he be stealing, you, the, he stealing watched, people's oh. stuff and hiding it. And, <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Brittany, oh, he have you watched Encanto yet? Encanto? No! Okay. I haven't okay. yet. So, yeah, so you wouldn't get the reference, but it's a song called We Don't Talk About Bruno. We don't talk and about Bruno. I went over to Dee's house and I, I told his son Isaiah, I was just like, hey, Isaiah, your dad keeps asking me about Bruno. And this kid, he he pulls his sword out and says, we don't talk about Bruno in this house. Not in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Not I love that he pulled out a sword. Mm-hmm. That's and what I, they pulled, do. I turned a blind eye. I said I'll be right back. Right. <laughs> but I will say that you know I w- I'm really happy with Dee's daughter because you know she used to attack me all the time, but you know she made a promise with me that she wasn't going to attack me anymore, and she whispered that to me that she wasn't going <laughs> to attack me anymore when I went over there. She protected me whispered from her it. son, so mm-hmm. you know it's it's good to have her. The protector. Because Dee, uh, what belt does she have in karate right now? Taekwondo, and she is a yellow stripe. See, so, and Isaiah yeah. is a second degree black. Yeah, D said, put some what? respect on it. It's Taekwondo. Taekwondo. I'm sorry, yes, sir. It wow. is different, but uh, wow. yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Hey, but, are you watching fun. anything else besides Demon Slayer? Oh gosh, uh, well, I mean, of course, I Demon watched Slayer's Finna. amazing. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. oh, of course, so you. good. Of course, I watched Finna. Had to because ah, oh, that's such a good show. I I keep telling people I was show. like, even if I wasn't uh-huh. in the show, I would be a huge fan of it because it's like you know pirates. Yeah. Oh, yeah, pirates. Don't forget just pirates. You got ninjas in it too. And ninjas. Mm-hmm. Now I want to oh. ask since since we got you on yeah, and you're talking about Finna, can you give uh, everybody listening an overview of Finna? Something brief for <laughs> those not watching it. Oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe I could talk we, for we a decade about character. Finna. We got the main character, of right? Cool. <laughs> so yeah, we got to do this. I love. Well, uh, okay. So, Finna Pirate Princess is about uh, Finna, who uh, was shipwrecked as a young girl and she is protected by a group of pirates and they go off on an adventure to try and solve the mystery of her her background and as well as solve other mysteries and find treasure it's pretty sweet yes (laughs) i'm like there's there's so much (laughs) and then there are ninjas and fight scenes and lots of blood Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I loved about it is because, you know, it was short and sweet. Like you mm-hmm. said, it had pirates and whatnot. You know, it's like they found the treasure and that was it. It was only 12 episodes. It wasn't a thousand. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> short and sweet. You know what I'm saying? Take, take it easy. Shot one yeah. he tried. <laughs> That's what he does. Try to remember this when he yeah. said he don't take shots. <laughs> remember that. That's right. But no, but I mean, like, I agree with you. It's like, it's a really good show. Uh, I finished watching it recently because, uh, you know, when we had Nick up here. I had told him it was on my list to watch. And like after we interviewed him, I was just like, OK, I'm going to check it out. And I was just like, man, like this is better than what I thought it was going to be. And the animation is really beautiful. I love how it's like Fena, she's trying to find her lost memories that she's had. And mm-hmm. to see, you know, where she started at, as you know, as an adult to where she ends up at the end of the series because i don't want to spoil anything it's it's been oh, an amazing i'm adventure. sure yeah no i don't i because it's like i don't i don't think that um it's gonna have a sequel because of the way that it ends but if they do have a sequel like i would love to see a movie and see where everybody's at right now without spoiling it i'm just letting y'all know it's a it's a it's a short and sweet anime and then you're gonna enjoy it and you're gonna fall in love with all of the characters out there <laughs> Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is kind of like uh, there's no manga for this, right? It was strictly written for the for the anime, kind of like mm-hmm. a Great Pretender. Yeah, that, that was right. my that was my understanding. Is um, it was the the director who um, the anime director um, right. who also created the show. Um, it was some it was a passion project of his that he has been thinking about for years, and he finally was able to do it. Um, An Adult Swim and Crunchyroll were like, "Yeah, let's go." Um, so it, that was pretty cool to be a part of something original, and it it was cool being um, doing the dub because usually when we do dubs, we see the finished show. Like the yeah, show's right. been done; it's probably been out. We're doing the English, and a lot of people have already seen it, so everything's done. With this show, 
some of the animation wasn't even done when I was recording. So watching it live when it actually aired, I was seeing it for the first time because sometimes it'd just be a still of a background or right. a picture or pencil drawings of the characters. So I didn't always know what was actually going on. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah it was it cool. Crazy. So something hey, you wanna... just don't get that a lot in anime. Yeah. I... So something I oh. want to ask you is because you know, this was an anime that you really enjoyed working on and you felt very deeply about it. So like, let everybody know, like, why was this anime important to you? Oh man. Well, it was, you know, it was my first lead in a mm. anime, which was really cool. And it's with a, a group of people that I just adore and love working with. Um, I, it's the NYAV post. They, they actually gave me my first anime job um, when I did Oko's In, which is a feature. Right. Um, and so it was really great to be with the team again. So that was, that was really special and cool. Um, but the character specifically, like, I don't know, there was just something about the cast and, uh, the story that really just grabbed me, I was so invested. I mean, there would be sometimes we'd be rolling and I would forget to say my lines because I'm like paying so much attention to what the other actors' voices right. sound like and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, I just want to know what happens next. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm supposed to talk. Oops. Um, so it made it really, it, it was hard when the show ended. And uh, for those who have seen the, the final episode, that was a very challenging episode to do. Um, but yeah, it was just a really cool experience. And I've never felt so close to a cast of people that I've never met. Like that was really strange and very cool. So, so that really reminds me because uh, NYAV Post probably is my favorite production dubbing company ever Mine too. every project they do is filled with heart and charm and love and all these things and every voice actor that we've ever had come on and they talk about an nyav project they all say they've never felt that way about a cast of people that they've never met before and it's just across the board constantly so I just love NYAV Post, man. Every time yeah. I see that they're doing something, yeah, I'm agree. automatically going to check it out because I know it's going to be top tier. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And I mean, mm. I, I told um, Stephanie and Michael this uh, the mm. first time I worked with them. I was like, anything you guys do, I don't care if it, what it is, I will be there. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, I mean, the even being in the sessions and stuff, they take so much time to make yeah. sure that each reaction, each everything is so grounded and heartfelt and like really means something. So it's not just, you know, uh, some of the quicker animes uh, where it's just like, <laughs> and you just have like those little random breaths that you have a million times. Yep. Um, they, they really get into it and they're like, so it needs to feel more panicked and more urgent and yeah. Yeah, yeah, I well, mean, they really take the time. Well, well, Michael's another one. He's a legend in the voice acting yeah. game anyways. You know what I mean? His credits are insane. Like, he's our childhood, so. Yeah. Yeah. And he's an amazing right. director. He's, he's yeah. a one, and a wonderful human on top right. of that. Look at that. You know, because um, I was going to say this, Trav, when you had started talking about uh, NYAV, it's like they've done Cannon Busters. They've done Great Pretender, which is uh, what I actually mentioned. And, you know, Brittany, to go off of what you were saying about how, you know, you do these scenes and, you know, nobody's in the room with you. And it's just like you just love the people that you work with. That was the same thing that we heard when we had the um, cast of um, Great Pretender up here, mm -hmm. where it's just like they weren't in the same room together. I believe that that was one of the things that they said it was the first anime to be recorded at home, I believe. That's what. Oh, um, yeah. I believe that's what um timeline wise Alan Lee had told us. Yeah, that sounds about wise. right. But uh that sounds about right. It's like, you know, you have these series and the writing is just so good. Like there is no manga. So it's right. it was created yeah. from scratch. And you know, just like with Fena, it's it was a really good show. And I understand why you feel the way that you do about it, because from the start to the end, it was really good. And I love how it ended and it ended on with, with uh, good feelings, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I feel like that's how you know that something has been written well and, uh, you know, drawn well. Full of emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It draws you in. Mm -hmm. Similar to, mm -hmm. you know, Cowboy Bebop. We were just talking about this a couple of days ago, Banks. 
how short it really is. Mm-hmm. You think that it's longer than it is, but it was just they fit so much into a small space, and that's right. You know, that's good directing. That's good writing. You know, good acting. So right. yeah, well, and it doesn't. Yeah. You don't get tired of it. Like it doesn't repeat yeah. itself. You know, because yeah. it's so compact, and you get everything in. And so yeah. you don't get those, you know, filler exactly. episodes that just are I, like, I think that's okay, one of my biggest pet peeves. Like if your story isn't going to just, just gra- like captivate me, you know, for a long period of time, but don't, you know, don't yeah. write it. Yeah. Don't, don't give it a chance to spoil, you know, you eat the food while it's hot. So hey, eat the food it. while it's hot. You know, I do want to ask you one more question, Brittany, before I wrap up my portion of it. And I, I just want to talk about theater for a minute Yeah. because I mean, these guys know I'm such a huge theater head and for today. Sure. I discovered coincidentally the Anastasia Broadway soundtrack. Mm. That, so good. Oh my God. It completely like <laughs> enthralled me all day. I've been listening to it. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. It was so good. Well, I love Christy Altamar. <laughs> Anyways, like oh, all the yeah. other stuff sh- she's been in, who mm-hmm. played the lead. Uh, because she was in, I don't know if you've ever seen Spring Awakening, but anyways, like Spring to get off Awakening. the. Oh, Spring Awakening. So good. But yeah, like I was. I just want to talk about theater for a little bit. Yeah. Like, what what is what is some of your go to you know, theaters? Oh gosh, so many. Um, you know, because I, I came from theater. Um, so I was in I, I was in Rent. Yeah, oh, nice. Nice. Wow. As, which was fun. I mean, not this is all like local theater. This is yeah, not yeah, yeah, super yeah, exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cool. It's a well known project. Though. Yeah, yeah. Who, yeah right. who, who, yes. who did you uh, play in Rent? I. I was one of the, I was in the chorus. So like, you know, the oh, okay. five people who uh-huh. have like pop in and out throughout <laughs> yeah, the whole yeah. thing. And that's still I was one of those. Yeah, yeah still- exactly. That's what I mean. Did you it watch was- Tick, Tick, Boom yet? <sighs> yes. This man, I- Andrew Garfield, this guy's oh, incredible. He's man, incredible. And he oh, studied for a good. whole year to prepare. Like, I'm like, yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's- a good story. It's a good uh, story. I, I haven't seen that since college. I stage managed a production of Tick, Tick, Boom when I was in college. Mm-hmm. And so I haven't seen it since. And it's, nice. uh, it was so good. Um, oh, uh, mm-hmm. so if you guys haven't heard of, if you like the 20s, um, I highly recommend Wild Party uh, by Andrew okay. Lippa. That's a very, that's a great musical. Adina Menzel was in it back in the day. Oh, nice. Try to put that on your list. Yep. I'm, I, I'm putting it on the list. Put oh, it I on the list. Check we, it twice. Uh, that was, I think that was the last show I was in. Um, it's it's a really good one. Lots of good music. Lots of drama. Nice. That's um, what I love. Give me hell yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and and <laughs> April, in April this year, I'm going to be going to see Beetlejuice on Broadway. Nice. It's going to be my first Broadway show. And um, I can't wait to check that out because I love Beetlejuice. And oh. On Broadway or on tour? It's, it's on Broadway. It's in New York. Yeah, you're going to yeah, Broadway going. in New York. Yeah. That's How so does cool. man not mention this ever to us, D? Uh, like, yes. That's, it, that's like a big deal. Hey, I'm making the announcement hey, on the podcast. He's know. making the announcement now. Hey, <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, when I go look, when I go to New York, I done already told all my New York friends, especially because a lot of the voice actors that we've interviewed, like they live in New yeah, York. Yeah, like, yeah. I wow. done told Nick I'm coming. I done told Bag and Sag and Danny Kramer Danny. I'm coming. And I told them all, I said, yo, I'm coming up there. They asked if y'all was coming. I said, nah, it's just going to be. <laughs> nah, we weren't invited, apparently. Yeah, this man going to go see Beetlejuice on Broadway. Damn, try like, got stuff nothing. to do anyway. That's cool. That's fine. That's fine. You guys, yeah. you got cool <laughs> stuff going on. Whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, bro. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that'll be such a good show. Oh, my yeah, gosh. I'm, I'm so hyped. jealous. Like, I was so upset. I had Hamilton tickets when they came to L.A., the week after COVID lock, first COVID lockdown. Oh, oh I was gosh. I don't have upset. Hamilton money, so you know I, I can't be doing all you that. Need to try <laughs> no, hey, I, you know, know what Hamilton money is. I'm good. <laughs> I know. I was so upset. I was like, no. Yeah, that COVID hurt a lot. You know, as far as plans, yeah, <laughs> you better cancel. Yeah, for every, yeah, yeah especially sir. like with uh with wrestling. I mean, like just sitting on the sidelines mm-hmm. and not being able yeah. to wrestle for a year, and then. It's different when you finally get back into the ring, which is cool because it's like the fans, it's like they're so full of energy when you get yeah. into the ring. But yeah. it's just a different experience when it's just like you're wrestling all the time compared to now and this is your first time back in the ring. So it's, Was it hard to pick that? Like, were, were you like exhausted after it? Like, oh no, 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 because because it's like you know i still work out i still go to the gym so it's like i was good in the ring it was still in ring shape yeah i was still okay. in ring right. shape, but it's just that it 
it felt different you know what i'm saying yeah. and you know for me and my tag partner it's like the first match that we had we was just like okay it's like it was okay but we could have did better but the second <laughs> match we had it was even better so it's just it's just one of those things where i mean i'm sure you know with voice acting for example i'm sure if you hadn't done it for a while and then you finally started doing it again i'm sure it would be a challenge wouldn't it or do you think that you yes. would be able to just pick it back up yeah. no i think it would be like a oh i'm tired this is taking a lot more energy i like i had a um it had been a while since I had had a four hour video game session. I had been like a lot of my video game sessions had been two hours for the past year. And I had mm -hmm. a four hour session uh, last month and I was like, I'm really tired. We got another two hours. What do you mean? <sighs> Can we just have a break? <laughs> so, but that's me. Yeah, no, I, I feel that. So I have one last question for you. And then D, yeah. he can hit you with his traditional question that he always asks. But oh, I love um, the question that I have for you is, with there being so many animators out right now, are there any projects that you would love to lend your voice to? Oh my gosh. Yes. So many. So many. Um, I, I, I will give, I, I would do anything. I would sell my right foot to be in a DC animated something. Ooh. I don't care what it is. That is my dream. Can't hey, believe there. that. Their animated uh, project is fire. With our, uh, with our boy Stuart Allen. He was a uh, Damian <laughs> Wayne on oh, yeah. all the DC stuff. Check out his interview He's too. It's so up here good. on YouTube. Yeah. yeah He's now, so okay. good. Now, I, I thought you, you were going to say your left foot, you know, like, a, <laughs> like Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> you know, I could. Yeah. Good you know enough. what? Either foot. Either one. Either one. Well, I want to ask you now, since you said that, if you could choose one character to voice, who would it be? Oh, that's hard. Um, okay, it's a tie. Can I do a tie? Yeah, no, that's cool. Okay, okay. Uh, Batgirl, Ooh. for mm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, I can see it. Or Poison Ivy. Ooh. I think she's. Really oh cool yeah, two good choices. Yeah. Two yep. redheads too. I like. Yeah. Oh, well, I didn't. Well even done. Think, I didn't even think about that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that answer. That, thank you for answering those questions for me. D, floor is yours. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Thank you. Hang on. Oh, Pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess up. So I'm going to ask you three questions. Usually it's just Ooh. two, but I, I okay. want to get your insight to this. First yes. question, if you had to give any advice to someone trying to get into the industry, what would it be? One, th one tip. One, one tip, tip or trick. Uh, my, uh, this was really helpful for me. Um, it's all about the journey. Enjoy the journey. It's not about the destination Hell because yeah. you have one piece. Yeah. You have yeah. no idea where it's going to take you. Like I never in my wildest dreams thought I would do video games in anime. Yeah. Never thought that was a thing. And that's what I do now. And it's crazy. So enjoy the journey. It, you never know how it's going to turn out. Nice. Um, question number two, favorite eighties or nineties movie or both. If you have one of each, it's up to you. Oh my God. I love both of those decades. Um, if you ask me about music, that'd be a lot easier. Okay. Um, but, uh, okay. So, uh, George of the jungle is always a good one. I love wow. that movie. Okay. Frazier. I, right. Yeah. I'm a huge early Brendan okay. fan. So like the mummy, I just rewatched again. Cause uh, I great movie. Love, Phenomenal movie. So love good. Movie. So good. Um, 80s movie. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, the original Batman. Uh, Ooh, hell yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, right on the tip okay. there. Almost. Right. I yeah. like that. I loved the costume design of that movie. I mean, he was just—he was just great. He was a great. No, I just—I just watched Batman Returns on Christmas because yes, it is a Christmas movie. It is a we Christmas did the movie. same thing. Ten four, it Trav. totally is. Yep. Now, Trav, the question is. Did you bite anybody's nose off? Hey, hey I, but I didn't. Uh, it's how still cool gross. It, how yes. cool was it when uh, Paul Rubens returned in uh, Gotham, and he was the Penguin's father? I thought that, that was cool. Mm -hmm. um, like that? Clever, clever, but, clever. Brittany, something I wanted to say because you said that you know you are a Brendan Fraser fan. Do you watch Doom Patrol? Because you know he's up there. So you know what's so funny? Uh -oh. My dear friend from Seattle. Uh, is actually Riley Shanahan is the body of the oh, of wow. Robot Man. Oh wow! Wow! And Brendan is the voice. As the voice, and yeah. When mm -hmm. he got so it's so funny because they both went to the same college, <clears throat> they had the same birthday. Wow. They're buds oh, now. Wow. 
Isn't that crazy? And so, um, yeah, when Riley got it, we were talking and I was like, how freaking cool is that? So that, yeah. 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 Anyway, yes. I <laughs> nice trivia that. drop. Yeah, that yeah. is a nice wow. trivia drop. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, my final, <laughs> my final question is, uh, Growing up, was there anything that scared you and stuck with you movie-wise, TV show, a uh, uh, spooky soundtrack? What you got? Yes. Oh, my God. That's a really specific and great question that I've never been asked before, and I love it. Um, so there's this movie. I might be calling it the wrong name, but I think it's called Willard. It's about oh, rats. Yeah, yeah the rats. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Horrifying. My dad mm -hmm. had it on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. And I sat and watched it. I don't think he knew I was there. Mm. And I had nightmares about rats for years. Mm. Oh, that's man. so oh, crazy. Man. I would have never expected this answer. That's a, that's yeah. a great thing. I <laughs> love it. Is, it is a great answer. Love it. Because, I mean, most of the time, you know, when D asks this question, it's usually like, you know, the thing or alien. Yeah. So it's yeah, interesting when you hear something like Willard because oh, Willard, yeah. it is a scary movie. Yep. Especially yeah, the remake. I thought the remake was really good, too. Oh, you, thought the, you thought the remake was scarier? No, I didn't think it was scary. You got to be careful with remakes, but yeah, that one's, uh, yeah. Oof. And, um, yeah, bo bonus question. Favorite uh, 80s or 90s music? Real quick. Thunder round. Thunder oh round. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Lightning uh, round. Lightning, um, round. <laughs> Lightning round. There it is. Oh, gosh. Uh, Heart is okay. 80s, Badass. for sure. Uh, 90s. Fire. Okay, go, 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 go. Uh, uh, Nirvana. All right, okay, nice. nice. Great pick. Chad Kroger? Great pick. Not Chad Kroger. Jesus Christ. Chad Kroger. No, what is his name? Uh, Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. Yeah. No, I, I got myself with the lightning Chad round. Chad Kroger. Lead no, singer never Nirvana. don't. Uh, yeah. Somebody's going to curse my soul when they hear uh, this. They coming for oh it. They got that. Hey, Thanks, remember when them swear. kids? Remember when them kids came for trash? They about to come for you now. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Like Tales from the Hood. They about to come uh, get me. They coming, man. I'm going to see the little dolls popping up around the house. Uh, oh, those are creepy. <laughs> oh, yeah. They were creepy. It's, hey, it's no. going to smell like teen spirit. Uh, let me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, sure is. Let me get the sage. I got to go. I got to yeah, spell my house. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, it was absolutely. a blast having you up here, especially for this being our three-year anniversary episode. I just told Trav that this the pinky is a, episode. Yeah, this is a good way to start off the year. Thank you so much for joining us. Let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, um, and my uh, tag's the same on both. Uh, it's just Brittany C. Cox on both. So yeah. Oh, Drop a line, yeah. and say what's up. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, y'all yeah. heard it. Try it. Let everybody know where they can find you at. That's right. I'm on the Instagram at ZK Audio. I'm on the Twitter at T R A V I O S Z K, where I'm also on Letterbox, ranking and rating my daily movie watches. Rebellious mm -hmm. one, man. Where, mm -hmm. hey, not only are they going to find Chad Kroger with Nirvana, yes. where are they going to find my yes, man? Yes, Chad ass. Kroger covers. Let me specify. <laughs> the covers. <laughs> no, but you can find me, as always, at rebellious double underscore D23 Instagram.com. And Banks, they need to hear. Hey, I, I need to hear. Hey, only a hero <laughs> can save me. Banks, uh, where can they find you? <laughs> we were just talking. Yeah, we were about just talking. It's, a, it's vindicated, man. Yeah. And, uh, also, on top, hey, on my way to see Spider Man No Way Home, best believe I played that song on the course. way there. I, I mean, it's such a good it. song. Banks brought it up. Song. I was like, I man, care. I forgot. I was like, yeah, wow. Oh, Nirvana oh, and Saliva. Hey, take it. The, take day, it after Chris, the day after Christmas, Sci Fi showed. Spider-Man one through three, and I was just like, man, it's like these movies are they still good. It's like the yeah. older. That's what I, I watched get, on Christmas. They showed yeah. one through three on Christmas. I watched them. I the guess it's the way I they get, shot them. The more I can appreciate Spider-Man three. You know, for sure. I, I felt the same way. It's yeah, like because we had high expectations for it. You know what I'm saying? But watching it now, it's it's it has cringy. It's moments. not as bad as I thought it was. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you can find me, your hero Benjamin Banks, at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mrs. Zuckerberg. Thank you again, Brittany, for joining us. Like we always say up here, keep that pinky up. Stay positive. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel podcast. We got that, too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, 
join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.